Welcome back, everybody, to the Home Inspection Whisperer Show. Today, I have Paula. She is the Solution Manager to ACC, which I think that that title is kind of goofy. We, you know, I like to call. I like to think of you as like the go-to person whenever I'm whenever I'm sending someone your way. And I almost don't even want to think of it as sales because you actually help people grow and build their business. Well, that's kind of where the solutions manager title came up from is, you know, I work with a lot of inspectors to help them find solutions to whatever pain points they're having. So right. that's kind of where the solutions came in from. <laughs> okay, then that, that is a good title then. <laughs> it makes a little more sense it, when yeah. you give a little backstory to that. Yeah, because you're not like, you're not really selling them because they're already coming to you, you know, and then you're trying to like bridging the gap between why they're having trouble with their phones or, you know, making mm -hmm. sure that their phones get answered the best possible way, right? That's Absolutely. Yeah. Nice. And I will help them find a solution, whether it's, you know, I'm missing phone calls, I, I need to grow my inspection volume, I, I need to market more, like we are going to come in and try to help you find solutions to those pain points. Yeah, then I do like that title. That is, that's a, that's a good one. All right, good job, Paul. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's good. I'll tell them you approve. Yeah. So um, the purpose of this podcast is we're going to talk about the beginning to end customer experience. And it's not just so much to sell you on ACC. Of course, I use ACC. They answer all my phones and every single person is there. But it's mainly just to teach the listeners to understand that your home inspection is not just a home inspection. You can't just be good at home inspections and then your phone's going to start ringing, right? So mm -hmm. You need, there's a, it's a full process to be selling home inspections, you know? So, and what I always like to say is home inspections is a product and it's, and it's no different than a product that, you know, you walk into a fancy restaurant and you want that beginning to end experience of being greeted at the door, the, the person coming to you quickly when you're sit down at your table, you know, the drinks come out mm -hmm. right or no different than you walking into a retail store and you walk in, you get that awe factor of all the bright and shiny things coming in. Like, like yeah. I always preach, you don't get the dough unless you put on the show whenever <laughs> you're in the inspections. It's about being remembered, right? Mm -hmm. People remember Target for the specific reason that it's clean. They got the red. Everything is out and easy to get to, right? There's and, a red shirt person every aisle you look down. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. So, and that that actually goes along with it because we wear our these blue fishing shirts, and mm -hmm. I'll be outside sometimes, and some of my agent friends will be driving down the road. It'll be like Chris, and they'll stop <laughs> and they'll get out of the car. I'm like. It works. <laughs> <laughs> we spotted you a mile away. <laughs> yes. Yeah, they got the sunglasses, you know, the blue sunglasses on. I got the blue shirt and I'm like, I branded it. It works. That's right. That's that yeah. brand recognition, you know, and that's what, you know, all inspectors should really strive for is that brand recognition. You know, not so much you recognize my name, recognize my company, my brand that I've put out there. Right. So no. I think you guys have done a fantastic job on that. Yeah, well, well, I'm kind of addicted to social media, so that kind of helps. <laughs> but at least I use my addiction for good, right? That's like, right. <laughs> <laughs> I just immerse myself, and at least it grows the company, you know? <laughs> yes, you're, you're using your talents for the good, not yeah. for evil. <laughs> yeah, so at the beginning of all the podcasts, I've been, like, just doing some random banter before we, like, get into, like, the list that you sent me. And I was realizing, you know, like, I – it is my birthday today. And I was thinking, I was like, you know, I have, I was about two or three years ago. I was like, man, I really need to get hobbies. You know, I, my hobby for the longest time was just like <laughs> home inspecting. And that's all I did. I got out of the Marine Corps and I, you know, I, you could see like I have paintball guns and, you know, wakeboard and a wake uh, board on the wall. And I used to do that stuff all the time, but whenever I uh -huh. became a home inspector, started the business, I literally gave up everything. So mm -hmm. like I worked for like six years straight and then I almost forgot like how to have fun. Right. <laughs> you know, I was like, and I was like, what am you know, I working for? What am I and it's so funny that you say that because, you know, I'll talk to inspectors as well. And while yes, here at ACC, we want to help you grow your company, you know, make you more money, but you know, personally, 
I find a lot of satisfaction when I talk to an inspector like you who, you know, they were doing it all on their own for a while, started up with us, and then I hear, you know what, or Stephen Reckner, he's a great example. You know, he's been able to get back into his woodworking, and he does some beautiful woodworking. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, so, you know, you, you guys work table really you hard. Made? Oh God, yes! Like I like I wish he lived closer to me. I would totally be ordering something from him. I probably couldn't afford the shipping to get it here, though. <laughs> exactly. I, I want, I'm building a table right here. That's the reason why my office is even more of a mess. I'm building a, a studio in uh -huh. my office, and I wanted a table right here. And I was like, I wanted to call him and be like, "Man, can you? I want to build like a podcast table. A really cool table." <laughs> but getting it from Ohio would be kind of tough. <laughs> Exactly. That's only a 23 hour drive. You know, it's like, <laughs> nothing, nothing too like a road trip for you and Mary. <laughs> <laughs> go, go get a podcast table. You know, but I love to hear, you know, when inspectors say, oh, you know, I went on a family vacation. I, I didn't check my phone. I was able to really be engaged with my family or, you know, I, I now make it to my son's baseball, football games, whatever the case may be, because mm -hmm. We also want to improve your quality of life as well. Like you guys work really hard. You know, right. you're working six to seven days a week trying to, you know, get an inspection business either off the ground or continue to grow it to become a multi-inspector firm. Like you should be able to take some time off away from your job and not worry about is your business going to suffer and enjoy some of the fruits of your labor. So yeah, then that, this is actually kind of a cool fact. I don't, I think I've told you this before, but we had an in-house office uh, and we booked, you know, on Mondays, we'd book like 10 or 11 jobs. Whenever we joined you, the first day that we did the transition over, y'all booked 23 jobs for us. Oh my God, I love hearing that. <laughs> and I was like, where has this been my whole life? <laughs> and, and of course, there was still the transitioning phase. Y'all still had to call me from a, a small thing because it was the first day. It was the mm -hmm. first Monday, but I was just like, I was like, dang. You know, so but, I should have done this years ago. <laughs> yeah. So what are your hobbies? You know, what do you do? Well, right now I've been really concentrated on I got a new dog. Some of you that are Facebook friends with me may know I when COVID happened and the gym shut down, I started taking to walking in my neighborhood. Well, the straight well, I thought it was a stray dog followed me home one day and this dog really just kind of took to me and so now I have a German Shepherd Siberian Husky mix at home. Oh man! <laughs> and am totally just in love with this dog. But that's that's a that's a pretty dog. I need I have not seen it on the the feed yet, so I'm gonna go look at it. Oh does, my god! Does it, does it talk to you, the husky? Because huskies talk. I mean, like when she's aggravated or she wants me to get up and do something, she, she absolutely does. But she's also a paw, so oh. she uses her paws like hands, and she'll like you know, paw at me, grab my arm, or <laughs> if I'm on my phone and I'm not giving her enough attention, she will yeah. try to smack my phone out of my hand. And I'm like, oh my God. That's a husky. Just yeah. the sweetest dog ever. And I'm, I've am i always had very small dogs. Like the dog that I already had was um, a, Pomer um, a Pomeranian and Shih Tzu mix. So very, yeah. very small. So I'm trying to really acclimate myself to having a much larger dog that sheds a lot of hair so <laughs> this yeah. new dog has been very much of a learning process and has become a hobby trying to keep her entertained get her exercised and you know all that good stuff but I am absolutely loving it I never thought I'd have a big dog yeah <laughs> I, have three I, dogs. I have three dogs in but this. if anyone has German Shepherds Huskies and you, you have you know tips on you know how to take care of them groom you know things like that feel free to inbox me, send me, send me your tips. I've been <laughs> on the American Kennel Society trying to read up, you know, because I've never had big dogs and I want to make sure I'm taking care of her properly. So yeah. I've been, you know, kind of reading up what I should be doing, which I found out, you know, number one, I was doing wrong. I was giving her a bath every week and oh, you're no. not supposed to, no. Oh. <laughs> and I was like, why are you always scratching? I know you don't have fleas. And then I started reading. I was like, oh, I am drying her skin out. I was like, yeah. okay, I get it scale back on the baths. <laughs> yeah, you're not supposed to, yeah, you're not supposed to, you might maybe, you just kind of bathe them when they get to the, they smell, you know. And I was just like, nope, you're getting a bath every week. We're going to make sure you're nice and clean. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Yeah, so, you know, since I've joined you guys, I, it has opened up a lot of time. So I've been able to, uh, you know, do hobbies. And whenever I was in the Marine Corps, I used to go to the gym all the time. 
and now I've been going to the gym all the time, but the, the COVID thing set me so far behind. I right? stopped going and I got lazy. And I was like, man, this is nice. Why would I go there and lift heavy things? <laughs> you know? so oh I'm trying to change my mindset back to going back to the gym. You know? I feel you. That, that one's really hard. But, <laughs> you know, and, you know, since we are live now, I want everybody to know, make sure everybody tells you happy birthday because today is Chris's birthday. So oh, I have a special happy birthday sign for him today. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, I turned the big fat 34. I don't even know if that's really that old. I actually feel great. You know, <laughs> yeah, I broke my collarbone in the Marine Corps. I get a little bit of shoulder pain. But if that's all I'm complaining about, that's pretty good. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> 34 is not old at all. You are still a very, very young man. You have your whole life ahead of you. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, I think. <laughs> all right. So get into the podcast about uh, this beginning to end customer experience? Mm -hmm. um, that would be your lead management. So, you know, you get the person on the phone. Not every single person is always going to book on that initial phone call. Sometimes they're not under contract. They need to check with an agent or maybe a spouse. Um, so that lead follow-up, it can be an integral piece as well. So, um, here at ACC, when we have that client on the phone, of course, we're going to do everything that we can on that initial phone call to get them to book that inspection. But, you know, we also understand sometimes there's things outside their control that prevents them from booking at that time. Right. So now that becomes a lead and we are going to now follow up with that agent or that client to, you know, see how we can continue to help them see if they're still needing an inspection because, you know, one of the things why people I believe why a lot of people just don't wait is, you know, we're kind of in that, you know, instant gratification type of society. You know, everybody wants, they want an answer now, right. um, coupled with the fact that, you know, the market sometimes gives very little time frames for folks to get their inspections done. So if you have a buyer and they're on top of their stuff, they know that they, they can't wait around for potentially someone to call them back because they have a very short time frame to get something booked, get an inspector out there, get their report and, you know, get any objections or, you know, negotiations back to a seller. So, you know, our industry is very fast paced and, you know, if you're not kind of keeping up with it, you can find yourself absolutely being kind of left behind. And, you know, that's where ACC can, you know, really come in, help with that lead management ensure that that first impression that your callers are getting of your company is the best possible impression. Right. So, so mm -hmm. the, the, you got the lead management and so you already have that one first initial phone call, then they, they don't book, right? They just hold the spot because they say they want to shop around or they need to ask permission or get access. And then you have to call them back again or they call you. What's the average amount of phone calls and you got to call the listing agent right to get access what's the average amount of phone amount of phone calls on one lead that you have to normally make to so, have a successful beginning to end inspection on average um and these are numbers that you know that we've kind of pulled just from the amount of calls that we make internally which is you know a, a massive number um mm -hmm. most inspections require anywhere from four to six follow-up calls um, and that sometimes is even when they book on that initial phone call, be it, you know, something was missing, we need to reach out and confirm those add-on services because, you know, we're always upselling our inspectors as well. Right. So if someone's unsure of those add-on services, then, you know, that's maybe another outgoing call. If a buyer's agent has scheduled that inspection, they're like, oh, well, I'm just going to leave it up to my buyers. Well, now we're going to call those buyers and be like, you know, hey, your agent has scheduled this inspection for you. They weren't sure, you know, what additional services you may want or need. So now we're going into that education upselling piece. So right. to yes. ensure that we're maximizing that inspection fee for our inspectors. So five, you said five to four to six four to follow six. up calls yeah. after so four, the initial booking. Yeah. So an average of like five phone calls per inspection. And then, and then how, do you, have y'all calculated the amount of time that is? You know, and, and that can vary because, as you know, agents are very busy. So if we're right. having to reach out to an agent, that could be multiple phone calls over multiple days because a lot of times agents don't, 
you know, they aren't that quick maybe to call us back to give us an email address. So, you know, we've left them two messages on Tuesday. Now it's Wednesday. We're starting that follow-up process all over again. So, um, yeah. you know, it really kind of just depends on, you know, the responsiveness of that person sometimes. But as you know, you know, we don't give up, you know, we're always reaching <laughs> yeah. out to them and, you know, just making sure that we're doing everything that we can to make our inspectors lives easier yeah. and give that customer service piece to your client because now, you know, yes, we may call a listing agent five or six times, but I guarantee you that agent is going to appreciate that better than, um, you go out there, don't know how you're getting into the house, and now we have to cancel the inspection in its entirety. Um, you know, I'd rather be, you know, get five or six phone calls to make sure everything's going to be smooth rather than to just have to cancel something entirely and have upset sellers yeah. and buyers. Their phone's ringing all the time. I've understand. Mm -hmm. I, I do believe that they, they're not even going to be annoyed. They're going to be like, oh man, I forgot. I need this. I need yeah. to make sure this and, happens. And God forbid they get another phone call, then they forget again. And, you know, now we're still doing it all over again. Yeah. I, I, I'm in a lot of home inspector forums and I always see inspectors like complaining that, you know, why, why don't they answer their phones or pick them up? And I'm always like, I'm like, man, that must suck. You're like, I don't know. That's not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's Trevor and them's problem. Yeah. yeah that, that's funny. All right. So you have the first initial phone call and then you have the lead uh, follow up. Then mm -hmm. what? What's the next step after that? Now, booking the inspection, you know, processing the order, making sure that you know we have access for you, or you know, we're making sure that we're following the guidelines that you've put forth for us in your yeah. scheduling, because you know we are going to schedule your jobs, in, you know, as close to exactly the way you would be doing it if should you be the one on the phones booking the job. So, mm -hmm. you know. One, we're going to make sure that we're following all the notes within your account, making sure that we're scheduling properly, um, confirming pricing, confirming those add-on services, making sure that that client has been educated on what those services are so they can make an informed decision for themselves, not just yeah. say no because they're like, I don't know what the heck a sewer scope is. Why would I need that? Yeah, th that's one thing I've always told people. They're always like, are you going to sell sewer scopes or, you know, anything like that. And I'm, and I always say, I always tell them like, yeah, they, they, they know everything about home inspections. That's all they do. All the phone uh, takers, they always, they know about termites, they know about infrared scans, they know about sewer scopes, they know about radon. You know, we don't have radon here. So you probably could teach me all <laughs> about radon. And I always thought that was really cool, you know, and Paul always told me that y'all use my my YouTube videos now in your training to show them <laughs> show them what we do. <laughs> yeah, because we we do have a very rigorous training. Like most specialists, um, go through three months of training before we ever even allow them to be on the phones scheduling anything. And even after that, they're under a watchful eye of a trainer on the team is double checking their work. So, you know, before anyone gets on the phone, we make sure that they are fully equipped with the information on, you know, the home inspection process, you know, how to sell all of those add-on services, you know, as well as then, you know, they will acclimate themselves to your company specifically. Yeah. So we have the first initial phone call, then we have y'all finish up the lead, y'all schedule the inspection, then my job comes into play Correct. and I go in and give that beginning to end inspection experience. Mm -hmm. And we have a YouTube video on that of our routine because some people don't understand and I, I was actually in your emails and one of the facts that you had in there was about easy to work with. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really funny because Whenever I'm at these conferences and I'm always looking around and some of these inspectors that I see, I'm like, are these guys easy to work with? That I actually- You think that? <laughs> and then, you know, I talk to some real estate agents and, and they always tell me whenever I'm talking with them that they say that we're easy to work with and that's why they refer us out. They do not say they refer us out because our reports are light or, you know, we don't make things harder than mm -hmm. seem as bad as they are. They don't care about that. It's about the ease to work with. So getting in the phone, you know, talking to the inspector, the inspector explaining the report, the whenever we're there, we look professional, we 
we're doing the beginning to end. You know, we have a routine. It looks like we know what we're doing. Exactly. You know, I'm not saying these guys don't know what they're doing. I'm sure they do, but it's about the experience of the inspection. It's not mm -hmm. just the inspection itself. So what I'm trying to get at is like, whenever you go anywhere, you always go back. For example, people are in love with Disney, right? You go to the <laughs> Disney parks because they will stand in line and mainly because of the experience. They're there. Yeah. It's a happy place. So whenever mm -hmm. they walk into my inspection, everything's opened up. Everything's on. All the lights are on. They hear bathroom doors closing, water running, you know, and they get this feeling that they're like, oh man, this guy's actually here and he's here to work for me. You know, right. and if you get used to this routine, you understand it, it's just like, it just becomes a part of life, you know, and mm -hmm. that part of life makes it to where you are, you're doing, you're providing these people with a really great service and they get that good feeling of, of the home they're purchasing that, that someone actually picked through it with a fine tooth comb and they know everything. That's right. So, yes. You know, so you the, know. not just with the phones, there's a beginning to end experience, but then at the inspection ex itself is a beginning to end experience all the way to the point where you review the report. And sometimes mm -hmm. that happens even later. Like some people are like, well, they're not here. Then they have to catch me if they can, you know, and I'll review it when they with them but no we'll review it with them whenever they're available so they understand what they're purchasing but then after that y'all step in again right it, that absolutely correct because you know all of those things could have been great up until the inspection you prepared the report they got it you know were able to review it but you know now you know, there were things wrong with the home they need to go back to the seller and negotiate um, repairs and they need clarification from you as the inspector. If they get your voicemail every time they reach out to you post inspection, you know, that's not providing them with great customer service. And, you know, again, that's where ACC comes in. You know, we, we take that phone call, listen to them. Number one, you know, that's always important. Listening to the caller, you know, hearing what they're saying, gathering that information. So then two, when we pass that information along to you as the inspector, you're not having to waste time listening to any backstories or anything like that because we've gotten that out of the way for you. You right. can get right to, all right, page 56 of the report, the HVAC, here is what I was saying, here's what needs to be done. So you can maximize your time when you're reaching back out to that agent. And, you know, now that agent, you know, everything's come full circle. They've had a great experience from when they first called in to schedule the inspection um, because ACC is the face of your company, even though no one sees us, but we're that first impression. Mm. <clears throat> You go out, provide a fantastic inspection, wow them with your report, and then should they have questions, you know, again, they're getting your professional friendly office. So they've had that whole beginning to end great customer service experience, um, which will also tie into retaining that agent potentially for more longer term business. And, you know, our research has shown if you can retain 5% of your customers, that could equal 25 to 90% in revenue. So, you know, you absolutely want to make sure with these agents that you are rolling out that customer service red carpet for them and making sure that they're having a great experience because that's what's going to keep them coming back. And, you know, I know when I say this, I'm sure some inspectors will say it's an oxymoron, but um, if you can create loyal agents, like, isn't that what you want? <laughs> you know, and again, some people say there are no such things as loyal agents, but <laughs> I don't necessarily believe that. I, no. There are some There's outlets. professionals. You know, Just like there's you, professional home inspectors. Exactly. You know? And if you really wow them and give them the level of service that meets and exceeds their expectations, then I, I do believe that you can gain you a loyal agent in that respect. What you said in there, there was something that stuck out to me and you said your customer and, you know, you, you referred to the real estate agent and, you know, a lot of home inspectors despise agents. Yeah. And, don't market to them or anything. Yeah. And the thing is, there's a difference. This is something that my father taught me and there's a difference between a customer and a client. And so a customer is someone that comes back regularly, right? Well, how often 
the average home buyer, how often are they buying homes? True. You know, (laughs) maybe so average, I'd say in a lifetime, and this is a successful person, what, five, six times, you know? Yeah. And they will slowly upgrade. So every five, six years, 10 years, they'll buy a home, Mm -hmm. you know? How long are you going to be a home inspector and think that that person's going to be a customer? So they're not customers. You're, they're, they're your clients. Mm-hmm. The people that you're doing inspection for are your clients. Are you going to um, dissuade the way you do your home inspection and not make it ethical for your client because you have a customer? No, you have to draw that line. You are going to do everything you absolutely can for your client, but your customer is going to keep coming back because of the, that's what they need you, right? They need you as a Mm -hmm. home inspector. They also want that experience, that beginning to end experience. And they know that their client's going to feel that they were taken care of and they are going to feel they were taken care of because there's a process Mm -hmm. all the way from the time that they get the inspection to all the way to the point that they end the inspection and they have the report with the follow-up phone call asking if they have any questions with with it. Absolutely. And, you know, I and I do because I know I talk to inspectors all the time and some say, like, I never market to real estate agents. Yeah. And, you know, a piece of me, you know, feels like, you know, they're they're really missing the boat because, you know, I know a lot of inspectors, you know, that's where you get a lot of your business from. And I feel like, you know, if you're of that mindset, you can really be missing out on a lot of business if you feel like you shouldn't or don't need to market to agents. But there's a lot of ethical agents. And I think it what happened is it has changed over the years. Whenever I first got into the industry, there was a lot of these agents out there and they're getting out of the field, but they would refer to us as deal killers or whatever. Mm-hmm. And a lot of things is, is, People don't understand that this trade is really new. Home inspections is actually new in the big scheme of things. It's only been around 40 years, you know? And so it it took a while to like shock the environment mm-hmm. of real estate where someone is like, no, these people should know everything about their home. This is the most expensive thing that they purchased. And agents have been operating way longer than that, you know, <laughs> than than home inspections. And so over time, I actually think that that mentality really doesn't exist too much. I do get it from the older agents, but all the younger agents and uh, even, I, wouldn't, I don't even want to call them young, but like 10, year, two year, 10 years in agents, mm-hmm. I never hear anything. They actually want to know what I'm calling out. So I call out galvanized piping or cast iron plumbing or whatever. It they want to understand like, okay, well, why is this bad? So I can help them out on the next home they purchase if they don't buy this home. Uh, Because a lot of the people that I surround myself with, it's about losing the house, but not the client, you Mm -hmm. know, and they, you know, they understand that that's part of the, the experience of purchasing a home. And I think it's even coached to them too, as well. Be like, Hey, the inspector is going to find stuff, but we need to only focus on the major items of the home. Wow, it's kind of a rant off the topic, yeah. <laughs> but I just want to make sure that a lot of home inspectors out there that are listening, make sure that you understand there's a difference between a customer and a client. Customers oh, always come back and that's how businesses thrive are through customers. And yes, your clients do become customers because they remembered you and they'll- They may refer you. They'll refer you out and cousins, try to use you again. Aunts, uncles, things of that nature. Right, but the reach is a lot further when people are actively lead generating. Like you said, you can create a loyal agent, right? Well, mm-hmm. a really good agent's going to send you one a week, you know. Yeah. And if you on one a week, and you're a solo man operator with a beginning to end experience, that that's a that's actually that you're only doing huge. ten inspections, right? That is ten percent of your income. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Well, yeah. you know, and you know, I listen to Steven Reckner's podcast that you did. I, I guess has it been two, three weeks ago? I've lost track of time. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. I do so many that I wouldn't even be able to tell you to begin with. But I loved his podcast because, you know, he is a stellar example of, you know, kind of where he was when he got started with us. And, you know, he saw 
his business double in the year that he was with us. And, you know, absolutely attributed that to, you know, many things that he implemented based off your suggestions. Mm -hmm. Um, And ACC was one of those. So, you know, I love Stephen Reckner's story because, you know, he is that prime inspector that, you know, he was doing great. He was doing good without us, but, you know, now with us, now look what he's doing. Not only has he doubled his business, but he's been able to improve his quality of life, I feel, as well, with his family, kids, hobbies. The work life like ex- work life balance. And that's one thing that, you know, when you're running your business or becoming a business owner, a lot of people forget. And it's 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 either your time or your money, right? Mm-hmm. So at the beginning, uh Reckner was sacrificing his time to the point to where he was very restrictive. He wasn't sleeping a lot. He was missing a lot of his kid's life, you know. Uh, And then I taught him the idea, be like, no, you spend your money so you can have your time, you know. (laughs) And I literally embody that like all the time. I, 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 my expenses are probably triple or even double most other home inspection companies, but it's because I really value my time. You, Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to work myself to death. I want to work and I enjoy working, but I enjoy working because I have my time, you Mm -hmm. know, and that's where I think a lot of people um, misunderstand, especially home inspectors are like, I answer my phone just fine. You know, I do 400 inspections a year and I'm like 400 inspections a year. And you have, five phone calls on every inspection and not including all the leads and stuff that you had to talk to. That's 2000 phone calls. Yeah. Like how <laughs> much time are you spending on the phone? You yeah. know, and you know, I always like to equate it to, um, you know, and this is something Paul told me years ago is, you know, as a home inspector, you know, how much is an hour of your time worth, you know? Oh yeah. And That's a good class. You know, it's a anywhere from $150 on up And, you know, when I say secretarial work, I don't say that to disparage secretarial work at all. No, it's important. But, you know, why would you, a home inspector, someone who can command, you know, 150 or more per hour for your time and your skill set, why would you spend that time sitting on the phone, booking inspections, reaching out to agents, following up for missing information, why would you spend that time doing something like that when you could have ACC and you're paying us, you know, three to five dollars per hour? I mean, it, you know, to me, it it's a no brainer. But <laughs> <laughs> Wait, well, they're not going to believe you. You're you're the solution manager. You, know? <laughs> you work for ACC. Why would they believe you? <laughs> you know, but the, but that was funny because I remember when I was talking to Steve Reckner and I was like. The very first thing that I told him, and I was like breaking it down, I was listening to what he had to say, and I was like, all right, the first step I need to do you to do is I, I need you to give up your phone. And he, <laughs> or he talked about it a few times, but it, you know, he was like, he had that feeling and his whole stomach sank. He's, mm-hmm. like, he's like, no, but that's like my business. I'm like, yeah, I know. But I was like, I've never <laughs> yeah, answered the phone in my life and I'm doing just fine. <laughs> you know, like, you know, and, yeah, so... Yeah, the thing is, is just, yeah, two takeaways here. Remember, it's either your time or your money. And, you know, spending time is actually more valuable to me. I like my get to back to the hobbies, you know, that gets to the point to where if you have a dog that you like, you know, take care of the dog. You know, if you have gym time, I'm not gonna, I don't like to tell everybody, well, I guess I am kind of, but I play video games, you know, I, (laughs) I play, I play video games. And, you know, what other home what other home inspector as busy as me can actually take time out of their day and still play right. video games you know a, a large multi inspector company like yourself but you know that's what i don't what think I i'm love. large i think i'm like middle size <laughs> <laughs> Been, there's a, some guy out in California has like a hundred home inspectors or something. So <laughs> I definitely don't want to be that big. I, you know, I like, I like, like my uh, little family, you know, that, that, that's a hundred headaches I don't want. right? <laughs> yes. yeah. No, but yeah. And it does all, 
all come back to that beginning and end customer experience. And, you know, if you can provide a great one, you know, along with being a great inspector. Now, obviously, you know, you can have great touch points in all those areas of customer service. But, you know, if you're a horrible inspector and your report just sucks, you know, there's nothing we can do to save that either. So, you know, we want to make sure that we can come in and provide you with that whole experience give your agents the best service possible and, you know, really help you as an inspector grow your business, increase your revenue and, you know, do whatever it is you want to do, whether it's get back more time. Yeah, increase, increase revenue niche. too. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that that's like a big one as well, because just by upselling, you know, just a home inspector on the phone and taking the time to re-explain radon or sewer scope scans mm -hmm. and how important they are, that that, that I know for a fact that some people are like, oh, I don't, I don't want to know your, I don't know your fees because I know they adjust depending on the volume of inspections. But some, I'm just like, whatever they quote you, just to start out, just increase your prices by that much, you know. <laughs> so, and then it's a wash, right? But I know for a fact that you upsell anytime mm -hmm. pools and water wells and septics and are always on our inspectors uh -huh. stucco we introduced stucco just recently and y'all were just selling stucco like crazy oh, i don't yeah. know what it is I, I don't know if stucco is just a seasonal but like during the winter time it's very slowed down but during the summertime man they like the stucco inspections whenever it's the hottest i don't it's like the worst <laughs> <laughs> well and you know like stucco can be you know very finicky because it is so dependent upon the weather so yeah. maybe it's better that they're doing it you know in the summertime versus the winter i don't know <laughs> no 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 the summer is like the worst it the it's like 110 degrees outside <laughs> it's good for them but i'm like i'm like man maybe but you're dying <laughs> Yeah, maybe I should stick to home inspections because at least whenever our first thing I do is I, I drop the AC down 10 degrees. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I've spoiled myself for 10 years. But, yeah, I absolutely love to hear that, you know, when an inspection company brings on a new service and the team's, you know, able to really kind of blow it out of the park and, you know, sell the heck out of it for them. So I'm yeah. so yeah, glad so to hear that. What, whatever you think it is, they're going to just through up sales pay for themselves. I guarantee it. And then your inspections are even more at Chip Stone too, as well. How long did it take me to tell Chip Stone to uh, come over? It was I think like, I talked to him a couple times as well. Like, it was like he months, started wasn't the it? process and then he kind of faltered off a little bit and then he kind of came back. And so, <laughs> and I know he's, he's on a team now and I think doing well, I know he's yeah. sent in several complimentary I, things. To his I team, think he so. cleared over 300 inspections this year and that's pretty good uh for his uh company i think he's only what three years in or something yeah like he, that. he was a relatively newer guy so yeah. didn't have yeah. a, a whole lot of volume to start change with. his life too because his wife's now able to retire and i think she's going to go and start helping him out you know oh so wow like, you know so they can be a husband and wife team that'll be fantastic yeah you know and that would give Chip another great marketing ploy as well. Like Same some of business. the, you know, the husband and wife marketing teams, which, you, you know, maybe you and Mary have experienced this as well, but. Not in know, the field, but they do know that we're husband and wife. Yeah. But, you know, some of the husband and wife teams that go out and market together, like, you know, it really resonates with a lot of agents. Like they like that kind of team oh, mentality yeah. or atmosphere. Yeah. The, the husband and wife teams. <laughs> oh, so I've, don't I think you know them, um, Katie Goggins? Y'all had the Goggins uh, for a while. They're a multi-inspector team uh, that were using y'all for a while. And one thing they did is they, it was just Chris going out and marketing for a while, and Katie going out and marketing for a while. But one time they were like, you know what? Let's do this together, and their business just like skyrocketed. Yeah, I, I don't know what it is. If yeah. people are just like, oh, look, it's a married couple. They're so cute. We have to use them. But well, it's different. <laughs> you know, it's not your normal just home inspector guy that seems to know everything and you you have the male that can talk to all the male real estate agents and then the and then the wife talk to all the female you know they they will relate to each other and then they remember you you were able to cover a wider room uh, mm -hmm. doing that so there you go that's 
there's a golden nugget right there. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> you, yeah. it, it wasn't even in the topic. So what, that was just an extra one I threw in for no charge. <laughs> yeah, no charge. <laughs> yeah. So I think we're but, right there coming up to the hour. So this is ACC. And if you use, if you listen to the Home Inspection Whisperer podcast and y'all drop it, they drop the initiation fee and they don't charge you for that. And they uh, give you uh, the Christopher Murphy care package. That's <laughs> correct. We will happily waive your one-time registration fee, which is normally a one ninety nine fee. Um, you know, just mention Chris's podcast or, you know, mention my, this podcast with me on it. And I'll be happy to waive it. I'll be like, Oh my God, you watched the one with me on it. <laughs> I'm, I'm so flattered. Nice. Yeah. And, uh, if, how do they reach you? What's the best way to reach you? My phone number, which is 816-945-6721. That's a number you can call or text me on that number anytime. And then my email is just my first name, Paula. And then my first initial of my last name, P. So Paula P at americascallcenter.com. Nice. And uh, she will be, she's also on Facebook too as well. And she's in the home inspection and whisperer group. So if you have any questions, she can help you out too as well. And honestly, guys, I, I don't know how else to say this, but like, literally I think of them as like part of my life, you know, it's just like, (laughs) it's like y'all are family and the conference, it just sucks because I really look forward to going, spending a few hours at the booth with y'all, talk to you. Oh and then gosh, I try I to know. find some people and send them over to you <laughs> so you can change their life too. You know, so, uh, people always come to me with like how expensive it is, but I'm like, yeah, but it's not really that expensive if you really break it down, you know, paying multiple people and, and, healthcare and 401ks and, you know, Not keeping to- someone for a long period of time, because then you got to think about your turnover. If someone, mm-hmm. you know, I don't have to handle any of that. I don't have to handle sick, sick days. Cause yeah. I know if I hired someone and they, and I taught them how to answer the phone and they had a sick day, I'd be a mess if I was answering the phone. Mm-hmm. Like an absolute mess. <laughs> you know, and, and that's the thing. Well, you know, yes, sometimes, you know, people may look at hiring in-house staff and, you know, you've kind of seen both worlds of it. Um, but, you know, with in-house staff, you have a whole nother set of in-house headaches. Inevitably, mm-hmm. people will get sick. People have children. Their kids get sick, um, you know, and with the state of the world and, you know, COVID. <laughs> like, COVID, you know, oh, geez. That adds a whole nother layer of, you know, are people going to be able to come into work or, you know, they going, even if you've got them working from home, you know. Yeah. Are, are we don't have to be the dead okay? horse. I'm sure everyone gets that. You yeah. know, so, you know, in ACNC, you know, those problems aren't yours. You know, right. if, they're, if we have staffing issues, those are internal things that we deal with and you're never affected by it, you and your company yeah, never. versus – you know, your office girl calls in on a Monday guy in the too. middle of May, you know, or <laughs> yeah, office guy, whoever you have, yeah. you know, but they're calling in on a Monday in May because they, you know, took a long weekend or something. Well, you know, that's going to be a pain in the butt for you because now what are you going to do? Are you just going to rearrange your entire day so now you can answer the phones or, nope. you know, or are you just going to kind of let them roll to voicemail all day? You know, yeah. neither one of those options are, are very good. Um, and, you know, again, not to keep bringing up Stephen Reckner, but I was, I was so impressed with, you know, everything that how his business has grown since he started with us. But, you know, absolutely, you know, he's been paying ACC, but he, his business has still doubled. And I guarantee you his revenue has, you know, basically doubled despite what he's paying ACC. So, you know, that's another thing that I really want inspectors to, you know, really understand, you know, yes, there are costs associated with our service, but we are absolutely one of those services where you are going to see a return on that investment. Um, So you'll actually like this. Steve Reckner, dropped a comment in the home inspection whisperer group as we're doing this. And he said <laughs> that his average fee has gone up 20%. So, see so, right there. I mean, making that money for our services right there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You made, you made a money, you know, <laughs> so sweet. So we're going to go ahead and end the podcast right there. Make sure that you reach out to Paula and ACC. If you have any questions, it's America call center 
and this is actually the last podcast I'm going to do in my messy office. So you can see here, I'm setting up a studio. So the studio is going to be all set up and it's going to be nice. And then the Homegirls podcast will actually be here too as well. I'm going to get some fancy mics and a, and a table. And I'm going to start doing tool reviews too on the YouTube channel. So make sure that you follow us on YouTube as well. And join the Home Inspection Whisperer group. And we also have a lot of free content on our HIW. It's actually homeiw.com uh, webpage. So you can find us there too as well. And I would just like to say, you know, one, thank you for, you know, having us on here and, you know, always being a supporter of ACC. You know, one of the things that I really love about you, Chris, is, you know, how willing you are to help other inspectors in the industry. You know, like you, you see some inspectors like, you know, they don't ever want to share any information about how they run their company because, oh, that's my competitor. But one of the things I love about you, whether it's a guy in Ohio or a guy in Texas, you are more than willing to share your information and, you know, see how you can help them out and help them grow their business and become a better business owner and home inspector. And that's one of the things that I absolutely love about you. Yeah. It's about surrounding yourself by like-minded people because especially with other home inspectors, because it's impossible to know everything, right? You know, and that's mm -hmm. one thing I say about my team all the time too, as well. Everybody on my team brings a different experience to the home inspection. You know, some of our guys, they're mechanics. Some of them are you know, prior home builders, some had electrical work experience, some have HVAC experience. And so we grow it together as a team and ask each other questions. But the same thing happens in the business world too, as well. If I run into a problem, you still want to surround yourself by like-minded people. So I'm friends with several other multi-inspector firms when I run into an insurance problem and they're able to refer me to who they're using or how do I handle this certain pay situation or setting up 401ks for the team. You know, they, someone else has already ran into those bumps and that's kind of doing it too. But also it goes back to how I was raised, you know, shout out to my dad, Brian Murphy. Mm -hmm. He really... He's always shared all his information. He runs a school. It's called Real Estate oh, yeah. Training Systems. And he, you know, he's just an open book. They'll ask him a question and we just give you straight answers. You know, we don't beat around the bush and we'll just tell you like it is and go forward from there. Well, I think it's fantastic. And, you know, just one last messaging for the inspectors listening, um, you know, never forget the entire inspection process. You know, just remember, like, you know, this industry is all about building relationships and, you know, that's really what we want to concentrate on and that's what ACC wants to help you do is build on those relationships and, you know, make things better for you. Nice. Yeah. So it, you're right. And the beginning to end, the beginning and experience all the way to the first phone call, all the way to the, how the report is delivered to the final um, phone call of asking if they have any questions, you know, that, that is a, mm -hmm. a, an experience that you just never forget because as soon as you, just like the inspection routine, as soon as you jump out to it, the leads will start, stop coming. Right. And then yep. remember your time is your money. So it's, it's up to you. Do you want to spend the time or do you want to spend your money? You know, so. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I tell inspectors all the time, you know, what's the one thing that no matter how much money you make or you have that you can never get more of? And that is time. Right. Like the time that you spend on the phones booking your own inspections, you're never going to get that time back. You know, you can make, you know, an inspection cancels, you know, maybe you add in some time on Sunday so you can make that up, but that time you lose, you're never going to get back no matter how much money you make. So nice. just remember that, but ACC can give you back some of that time. So yeah. Nice, nice drop. There you go. All right, so we'll wrap it up there and uh, follow us on uh, social media and uh, make sure that you call ACC whenever you want to stop answering your phones. Yep, you can send me a message on Facebook, tag me in anything, whatever you need, and I will give you a holler, I promise. All right, thanks. All right, and happy well, birthday, Chris. I hope you have a wonderful one and don't get too wild and crazy tonight, okay? Nope, it's just... Just me and the Xbox. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, do you have the Xbox Five? No, no, not yet. That's a real thing though, right? That's uh, what they came out with this year. I think it's called something else, uh, but no, I haven't gotten it yet. I'm going to wait till January. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. See you, Paula. All right. It was Catch great you seeing you guys. Bye, everybody. Bye. Take care. 